.NET for Devices presents Even Tiles Part 7 Tombstoning Hello once again. So we are going to continue with even tiles and we're going to talk about tombstoning and fast application switching this time. I already have Visual Studio open with the solution and let's just start it and let's take a look at what we have so far. So here's even tiles. We can go to the settings screen here and we can maybe, you know, like alter our string there a little bit and that contains that property that we can write on the backside of a secondary tile for our application. Of course that functionality is not there yet, but hey, if I switch my application to the background and then switch back to get my application back to the foreground, what you can see is that that string is nicely saved for us. And as a matter of fact, the only thing that is different is that, hey, our text box had focus and we had a cursor pointing there and when we returned we did not have that cursor available there anymore and it seemed that we did not have focus inside our text box. So that is something we need to change. We're not going to fix that in this episode because we're going to keep that until the next episode of Even Tiles. But there is some other issue that we are going to deal with today. So, so far our application stayed in memory even though it was in the background. But there is this situation that our application might be removed from memory. And um, if the user is using the back key, we still need to return to the location where we were. And in order to test that, what you can do is go to your project properties for your solution, go to the debug tab, and then select that uh, checkbox tombstoning upon deactivation while debugging. And what this means is that our application will be removed from memory. The only thing that will be stored for us is the current page that we are on when the user decided to put the application to the background. So let's just run the application now. We're going to go back to the settings screen again. Maybe we're going to alter that string there, although that would not even have been necessary. But I'm just going to restore the original string here. You can see that because automatically our button is disappearing. And now I'm going to go again ahead and send our application to the background and after that this time our application is not stored in memory only the current page number and now if we are returning to our application using the back button what you can see is that hey instead of going back to our application we are getting an exception here an argument null exception and that exception is unhandled and since we are stopping on that assignment of our text property of our text box to that actual secondary back content, it means that that particular property was not initialized. So let's take a look why that is happening. And for that we're going to open our app.zaml.cs file and we're just going to take a look at initialization of that property. And we did that in our application launching event. So what I'm doing now is setting a breakpoint there and we're just going to run the application again to see whether or not we are stopping at that breakpoint, which typically means that that statement will be executed if we are stopping at that breakpoint. And if we are launching our application, that is exactly what's happening. So we're going to verify there like, hey, is there application settings containing that particular back content key? And if so, we are going to assign our actual secondary back content to the settings that were stored in isolated storage for us. And that was something we saw already in episode 5 of Even Tiles. Now, if we're going to continue running, and if we're going to go to the settings again, and again make sure to put our application to the background, um, let's see what's going to happen then the minute the user returns to our application. Are we stopping on that breakpoint to initialize that actual secondary back content? So let's take a look here and no, we are apparently not because we are getting an exception in the unnavigated tool on our settings page. And what we needed to do actually is take a look at another method that will be called, which is the application activated method. So if an application is activated, in other words, it's not freshly started, but it's activated from a previous situation where it was in the background, another breakpoint will be hit right now because another method will be executed. So initially we have that launching event that was set. 
we go back to or we go on to our settings screen again then we put our application into the background and uh, we are going to return from a tombstoning situation here and what happens now is that instead of application launching you can see that we get an application activated event so this is an indication that our application was returning from the background uh, at some earlier time it was already started but now it's returning from the background and if we take a look at that actual secondary back content property you can see that we see a could not evaluate expression there and what that means is that hey that property is not initialized yet so we need to do something additional to make sure that that property is initialized when we are returning from a tombstoning situation we didn't have to do that in case of fast application switching because in that situation the application just remained in memory so that variable was already initialized and that's the reason why it always makes a lot of sense to test our application not just for fast application switching but also in the situation where tombstoning might be involved because you never know if your application will be tombstoned so what I'm now doing is just in the application activated, we are initializing that property again. Also, when we are uh, put in the background, we will get an application deactivated event. And in that situation, we need to store our current state because we don't have a clue whether or not our application will be started again or will be restarted, you know, like a fresh copy or if we are going to return from tombstoning. So it is important each time our application is closing, but also if our application is deactivated to make sure that we store state information. So typically what you will see is that, hey, in an application deactivated and in an application closing, you just perform the same actions. Now let's run the application again. Let's take a look what's going to happen now. We're going to go to our settings screen again and we immediately hit the start button. So we are being tombstoned again and if we are returning this time hopefully what we will see is that hey now we are returning properly to our settings screen. We still have that same issue that focus is not set properly on our text box but that's something we're gonna change in episode 8 of Even Tiles but for now this looks already much better. However, we can still make some improvements and for that I'm going to set a breakpoint again on application activated and we're going to deselect tombstoning upon deactivation while debugging. And what that means is now our application remains in memory if our application is put to the background by the user. So the user clicks again on the start button, our application is still in memory now, it is not tombstoned and if we are returning what will happen is basically the same event will fire. So we have an app application activated event but this time the actual secondary back content is already initialized so it doesn't make sense to do that again and as a matter of fact if we would have a lot of variables that needed to be initialized we would just you know like uh, get a bad performance so in order to prevent that what we can do is take a look at our activated event arguments because one of them is called is application instance preserved and what that means is like if that's the situation then our application remained in memory when it returned so everything is fully initialized and only if that's not the case so in a case of tombstoning we need to initialize that particular property so if we're going to run right now and if we go back to our settings screen uh, hit the start button again and then return to the application we should not hit that breakpoint this time because our application instance was preserved so now we have an ideal situation both for fast application switching and for tombstoning and that's kind of important um, the only thing that we don't have right now is a proper dealing of setting focus inside our application and keeping focus inside our application when we are returning from fast application switching or from tombstoning uh, because what we want to have basically is hey if our cursor is located the way it is right now and if uh, our text box has focus well if the user goes to another application but then returns they want to have exactly the experience as if our application was not interrupted and we need to add some additional code in order to get that situation done but that will be the topic of episode 8 of Eventiles. For now we are done so I hope you enjoyed this video.